My name is John Freeman. I am the care partner for my wife, Martha Freeman. My name is Terry Sym, and um, I am the caregiver for my husband, Lionel. I'm Marla Vlieger, and I'm a caretaker for my mother-in-law. Uh, my name is Jim Shinto, and I'm a caregiver for my father, who has Alzheimer's disease. My name is Rick, and I'm an Alzheimer patient. My name is Elaine Vlieger, and uh, I discovered my uh, that I was had. Uh, you know, see, I can't even remember what we call it. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it except like. My world just falls apart. I think that people probably feel pretty alone and isolated when you first find out about it. But as you come to these meetings and you get to meet people and know people and talk to people, not only do you realize that there are people, there are other people who have the exact same issues that you do, but you can learn from from them. You can learn from the way that they dealt with the situation. You can learn from their experiences. You can learn what's good and what's bad and what works and what doesn't work. It was a two-hour class and we didn't know the vocabulary. We didn't know the dialogue. We didn't know what to do, what not to do. We, we were so in the dark and that was the first time that somebody had shed some light and gave us some direction and, and that was the beginning for me of getting involved in the Alzheimer's Association. In the Hispanic uh, culture, it's really important to understand more about the disease because by not understanding the disease and not knowing what it is, we have a misconception that when somebody has dementia or Alzheimer's, they're considered crazy people. This information that I got through the Alzheimer's Association help me have more consideration for people that have dementia. These are the faces and the voices of Alzheimer's disease, each with a different yet shared story. Today there are more than 5.4 million Americans living with Alzheimer's. Of those 5.4 million, more and more are being diagnosed earlier. As doctors detect the disease at an earlier state, medications become more effective and families have the opportunity to gain knowledge and become empowered. We have programs, services, groups, classes available for families at every stage of the disease. And in particular, we're serving more and more individuals with early stage Alzheimer's and their family members and care partners at a point in the disease where they can really be involved in the, the groups with us, learn along with their family members, and really gain from that sense of support and connection with other individuals on the same journey. The state of how the Alzheimer's um, disease and memory related disorders is growing and the need for research to determine how we can end this disease. I really believe every single person, if not directly impacted, will know someone who is affected by the disease. And uh, there's an obligation, I believe, on our part to continue to ensure that the resources, programming, and support are available for all the generations to come as long as we still have this disease. Momentum in the Alzheimer's movement continues to build. In the world of medical research, there have been advances with the help of individuals and families involved in clinical trials close to home. We've been working together um, on various tests and things that we do for Alzheimer's patients. Uh, plus, uh, I think it's about every three months, I get an infusion of uh, medicine. and. Uh, Hopefully. Advocating for increased funding for research has been an important focus of the work of the association and the signing of the National Alzheimer's Project Act last year was a major victory on the advocacy side. If the federal government and the Alzheimer's Association together isn't successful in addressing this issue, it will be something that changes things for it, it, for the worse for this nation as a whole. It is an issue that must be dealt with absolutely. 
More funding is needed, significantly more. It is expected that 10 million baby boomers will be diagnosed with the disease in the coming years. For them and the people who love them to have support, resources, and the very best care, more must be done. But as always, there is hope because the people who understand the overwhelming need are determined to do something to help. For the Alzheimer's Association, one of our greatest reasons to hope is the support that we receive from individuals in the community, from our corporate partners and sponsors, from community foundations. They are the ones that make our work possible and we need their support more than ever um, as we face the epidemic of Alzheimer's disease in Colorado and throughout this country. It is the support from donors that sustains the faces of Alzheimer's and illustrates the importance of giving for each person diagnosed and each caregiver committed to them. Every day they face this debilitating disease, yet they are steadfast in hope and always offering encouragement for others who will walk this journey one day too. People with Alzheimer's don't, aren't just to be written off, they still have so much left to give. It's going to take a lot of grace and a lot of adjustment, and that's okay. And you want to maintain the relationship with the person. And sometimes, as it changes, you have to grow with it. And that's okay. That's part of it. <laughs>